Good evening, India and I do with late edition news. John Howard has met Japanese Prime Minister Rutaro Hashimoto today, who voiced support for Mr Howard's push for tighter gun laws in Australia. During the three hours of talks, Mr Hashimoto made a point of congratulating Mr Howard for his courage on gun control, a point he repeated publicly. I think it was a very brave step taken in Australia for gun control. I should like to pay tribute to the efforts. Mr Howard spoke of the warmth and depth of the bonds between Australia and Japan. The relationship between our two countries uh, gets deeper year by year. Uh, it has gone way beyond a mere economic relationship. I can now safely say that we can discuss any issues at any time over the telephone. May I say that, Mr. Prime Minister? And the Prime Minister tried to gloss over the impact of yesterday's glitch, his removal of an admission that his workplace reforms could cost jobs in the short term. Japanese business, he says, is very much in favour of the changes. Virtually every person who I met uh, raised uh, these initiatives uh, in an entirely positive and welcoming fashion. Mr Howard returns to Australia in the morning. Japan's foreign minister has been in Washington today discussing security matters with the Americans. And US Defence Secretary William Perry has flatly denied reports that the US is considering winding down its presence in Okinawa. We maintain about 100,000 troops in Asia nearly half of them stationed in Japan. In light of the recent incorrect press reports, I want to state clearly that we have no plans to change our troop levels in Japan. A referendum earlier this month found almost 90% of Okinawans favoured a reduced US military presence in the prefecture. US President Bill Clinton, currently on the campaign trail, plans to visit Australia for five days in November. The announcement was made today by Acting Prime Minister Tim Fisher. Mr Clinton will visit Sydney, Cairns and Canberra, where he'll address Federal Parliament. Hillary Clinton will accompany the President, their visit preceding the APEC Leaders' Summit in the Philippines. The trip has yet to be announced by the White House. It'll be the first presidential visit to Australia since George Bush in 1992. Labor leader Kim Beasley says he wants to go to the next election with an agreement with the union movement. But the ACTU says it knows nothing of the plan and has no intention of reviving the accord. This is what the opposition is predicting will be a feature of our industrial landscape. Striking workers at ACI in Melbourne today marched on the company's headquarters. As the company prepared to bring in contract labour, unions threatened to take the dispute national. Labor's solution to industrial turmoil is a new accord with the unions, something the opposition wants to discuss with the ACTU. But this was news to the unions, which says an accord is not on the agenda. That's not something that we've countenanced. I mean, the union movement has a job to do on behalf of its members during this period, and we're focusing on doing that. The ACTU also denied it planned to stage another protest rally against the government's workplace relations bill, following last month's protest at Parliament House in Canberra. But that didn't stop Peter Reith. I think the Australian public would look to the ACTU to apologise for its part responsibility in the last riot before they start organising yet another riot. Not so, says the ACTU which says it's simply planning a peaceful rally to support its living wage case next month. Israeli military aircraft have struck at southern Lebanon in retaliation for a Hezbollah attack which killed two Israeli soldiers. The Israeli jets and choppers reportedly hit a Hezbollah base. It's the worst fighting since a US brokered ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah guerrillas. That ceasefire had halted an Israeli blitz of the region back in April. In Brazil, at least 15 people are dead and 60 injured after a freight train went out of control and rammed into a rush hour commuter train. A railway official said faulty brakes on the freight train caused the accident. It pushed the three-car commuter train for about 200 metres before coming to a stop. And Bill Clinton's ruled out George Bush's expensive old proposal to land a human on Mars by the year 2019. But there'll be two unmanned missions to the Red Planet, one next year and one the following year. 
robots will go where humans don't, helping to determine the feasibility of human missions to Mars sometime later in the next century. Back on terra firma and the discovery in the Northern Territory of two new species of freshwater turtle. The creatures were found in a billabong close to a popular tourist spot. This is Northern Wilderness Country, Catherine Gorge in Nitmaluk National Park. This long-necked turtle, Chilodna, is one of the new finds. DJ, on this side, on this side, look at the turtle. It's already attracting attention after its discovery by a team of scientific divers in shallow, weedy water. The long-necked turtle differs from the, the common species by uh, having a much larger and flatter head. Uh, and the, the short-necked turtle differs in the, in the structures inside its mouth. It's got a much larger plate inside its mouth for, for crushing food. Both species of turtles feed on shrimps in billabongs close to here. While they're new to the scientific world, they're well known to traditional Aboriginal hunters. The unique features of these turtles may lead scientists to reappraise what's already been written about Australia's existing species.